Hello everyone, uh, it's me, and today I'm going to be talking about my thoughts and my time with Axiom Verge. Um, I'm going to try and keep this video brief so that I never have to think or talk about that dog shit game ever again. You can probably already tell how I feel about it. So, where do I begin? Um, I'm going to start with what I liked. Uh, and what I liked was uh, the guns. <clears throat> That's just about it. Um, the guns are interesting, and uh, each of them does something a little bit different. Um, and that's the extent of what I liked about the game. Oh no, the boss fights. Some of the boss fights are fun. However, something that kind of hurts my ability to enjoy the guns is that all of them are just different ways of dealing damage. None of them have any sort of special properties. None of them do anything that's particularly different. They just have different animations and different spread patterns. Um, and so that was a little hard for me to enjoy. Um, oh gosh, where do I even begin? Um, I guess I will begin with probably the two most offensive things about the game. Um, and that is the music and the visuals. The music is possibly some of the worst 8-bit I've ever, I've ever heard. Um, I, I really can't stand it. After playing Axiom Verge for 10 hours, it really starts to grate on your ears. Um, because I don't know how to describe it other than saying that it's bad 8-bit. Um... And the same goes for the visuals. Um, the visuals are nondescript. Uh, oftentimes, you can't really tell what an enemy is. It's just kind of a thing, you know. I don't. I don't. I don't even know how how to describe it. Like, um, it's it's so it's low resolution. And of course, you know, that's, you know, it's an 8-bit title, sure. But I've seen bit graphics that look really good. Uh, for one, Hollow Knight. Uh, for another, Castlevania. You know, most, if, I mean, pretty much any Castlevania title is going to look good with its 8-bit graphics. Or, you know, 16-bit or, or however many bits there are. But Axiom Verge is not that. Um... It's a combination of bad sprites and and really just horrendous hues that are used. Um, I mean, there have been times when I would be sitting down and after you know a two and a half hour play session, I would start to get into I would start to get a headache because of the color shades that were that were in there, and it was. Um, yeah, visuals are not good. Okay, so uh, so covered visuals, covered the music. <sighs> Let's get to the gameplay. Um, so the gameplay is... Um, honestly, it's kind of standard fare. There's not really... As far as Metroidvania titles go, there's nothing that distinguishes it from other titles other than that the gunplay is really awkward. I mean, I can't think of anything aside from the guns, which I've already talked about, that makes it different from something like Castlevania or Metroid. Um, it's just, it's very ho-hum. Um, if you are a fan of Metroidvania games, uh, you might like this if you really super like the old Metroids. Um, you might like this. If you're like me and you think that the old Metroid games are dog crap because their design is obtuse and, and antiquated, then you're probably not going to like Axiom Verge because its design is obtuse and antiquated. Um, there will be times where um, you come to a room 
and you you know there's a there's a secret section but but you don't know where it is because all of the blocks look normal and so you just run around using your laser drill against pretty much every block in the in the room um trying to see the one that trying to find the one that's supposed to break because there's no visual indicator subtle or otherwise about whether or not the block is going to break there are blocks that are introduced to you as blocks that are going to break and then they appear later on and you try to use your drill against them and they don't break similarly there are blocks that are introduced to you as blocks that don't break and then later on there there are blocks of the same type and texture that you can use your drill on and break them there's no visual consistency there are times when a, a certain tile type is used to uh, denote the fact that there's a solid wall and then there are other times where you can just walk past the tile type um, as a background there's no indicator on most tile types as to whether they are background or whether they are uh, whether they are uh, physical blocks and that gets to be a real problem um, because you know, a lot of the time it'll look like you can maybe teleport through a wall and get into a secret area, but then you try five times and it's like, oh, no, just kidding. That is actually a solid block this time, not a background tile. So there's very little consistency as to how the game works. Um, and if you like games like that, I can't imagine why you would, but if you do, you'll like Apexium Verge. The one thing that ruined the experience for me and that kind of made it made me start realizing okay this game is subpar um was an instance where i was exploring and i i i, I jumped down a ledge and i tried to jump back and my jump was was too low and so i'm like okay sure i'm about to get the high jump ability that's cool all right i'll continue exploring you know, because that's a very normal thing that would happen in a Metroidvania title. <laughs> well, I continue exploring the next area. And I don't come across the high jump. I get to the next area. I find the high jump. And I'm like, okay, sure. Well, I'll just continue exploring to see if I continue, can can further the, uh, further the story. Okay. I finally reach a point where I cannot advance in the story without certain items. So I'm like, okay, I'll go back to that ledge and I will, you know, jump over it because I have the high jump now and, and I'll go back and I'll find something that I missed and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I go back to the ledge, I use the high jump and I am three pixels too short and I'm stuck. I, I, I cannot go forward because I don't have the items and I can't go back because the high jump isn't high enough to clear this ledge. I think I must have spent two and a half hours just trying to find my way out of that situation until I finally resolved, okay, my save game, this, this, this save is, is garbage now because I can't do anything with it. In a last ditch effort, I go and try the jump one more time, and it's not the jump that gets me there. There is an enemy that accidentally damage boosts me up on top of the ledge. I don't know what's worse. The fact that they let that that they left in such an obvious and game-breaking oversight, or the fact that there was an accidental way of getting over their oversight, which they didn't, which they clearly didn't plan in. I I actually don't have anything good to say about this game. Um, it's not pretty. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't play well. The backtracking is a pain in the ass. Um, it's just, it's not good. And honestly, in my opinion, anyone that gave this game a good review um, was operating out of nostalgia because this game is terrible. So to Joshua specifically, because uh, he, my older brother, has been looking at this game 
please, 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 if you want to play it, borrow my copy. Don't waste your money on it. It's bad. So, those are my thoughts on Axiom Verge. Um, I think that's the most I've torn a game apart in a while. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed hearing me uh, tear this terrible game to shreds. Uh, and, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So I realized after I had finished recording that I hadn't said anything about the story of Axiom Verge. Um, and so I will do that in this uh, kind of post video segment. Um, well, as, as is probably not surprising, if you watched my, the rest of my video, um, the, uh, the story is not really much to write home about either. Um, it's somewhat intriguing. Um, but the intriguing nature of the story, um, is hindered by a couple of factors. The first is, um, really, really awkward writing, really awkward, bland writing. It's the sort of stuff that you would expect to find on creepypasta.com. Um, that, that'll give you an idea. Um. It's very self-serious, which leads it to feel kind of overwrought. And um, it's, a, it's an amount of self-seriousness that um, is not backed up by the quality of the game. And so it just, it just, it feels really pretentious. And I honestly, I found it kind of annoying um, because it was so pretentious and the game was so bad to, you know, to try and support it. Um, yeah, that's the story. Um, honestly, it's not even something that I would find, well, no, it's somewhat intriguing, but it's not, it's not the sort of thing that would spark the sort of intrigue, um, as, you know, a Sherlock Holmes story, which is, I guess kind of what they were going for in that, you know, the, the plot and, you know, what's actually going on the, in the world unfolds as you explore it, which is, I think what they were going for, but it didn't work. Anyway, that's uh, a, a very vague uh, note about the story. So yeah, actually goodbye now. Goodbye.